Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Fossilus from KTBG. KTBG, or Kids Table Board Gamings, and Fossilus is a game of, well, being on an extraction site and trying to get as many points as possible as you gather various fossils, trade them in for dinosaurs, and get as many points, both to the dinosaurs themselves, as well as a bunch of set collection, remnant points, a whole bunch of things going on here. The general turn structure in this game is across a variable number of rounds, you're going to be spending, you're going to be taking actions, spending energy to take actions, then buying a card, then claiming a dinosaur to your lab. That's the turn sequence listed on your hand, the hand down little player right over here. Every single round, you're going to spend four energy, and you can spend energy to do a variety of things. Each of these check marks represent the energy cost of the action. For a single energy, you can gather a plaster from this pile. Whenever these are depleted, it will trigger the end of the round. That will happen several times before the game end is triggered. Uh, from there, you can spend an energy to move your person one or two spaces across the dig site. You can spend an energy to pop back onto the dig site. Throughout the course of the game, there will be times where you get knocked off the dig site, and you can spend energy to pop back on. You can also spend energy to put tiles back on the dig site, which will be helpful to extract those tiles. Then you can spend one, two, or three energy to extract the various type of tile. What you have to do is either a tile next to you or underneath you gets pushed. Tiles can only push something of their same weight or lower so you can have stone you can have sand pushing sand you can have clay pushing clay or sand and stone pushing stone clay or sand which was also a tricky little puzzle as you try to figure out exactly how to push things off the board because once they fall off the board you get to keep that tile and eventually trade that tile in for resources we'll talk more about that shortly and then lastly you can spend plaster in order to extract something from the various uh, depots over here which once you push something off you'll see that there are little things inside this depot where you can reach in with your little tool and harvest the specific piece that you need in order to trade that in for the dinosaurs that you need. Now, a bunch of plaster costs two extracting. You can see that all printed on the player board over here. Either two, three, four, five, or six plaster to extract specific pieces. And then hammers, you have only one per turn, but you could extract a hammer and trade that in for one of these ability tiles in this grid. The first one's going to be a bit of a freebie. The second two and three are going to cover these spots, take covering up the points on them. So make sure you want that ability when you go ahead and extract that. That's going to be the energy phase of your turn, spending four energy in order to take any number of actions uh, across the course of the, that turn and spending any number of tools, which we haven't talked about, but we will right now. Because the next thing you do when you're done is you can then go ahead and buy a card. You can buy a card from the display over here, either tools or supplies. Tools are going to, you can see the cost underneath the card showing you either if it costs a, a wild resource or, or specific resources, and you can trade in the various tiles you've acquired that you've knocked off in order to get those. So if I go ahead, let's just get find something over here. If I have this tile over here, I can absolutely go ahead and trade this in to gather this. Any change though is lost. Any, any leftover cost is lost. So I can ga gather this clay spade, but it will be lost for the extra resources spent on it. So you're gonna go ahead and trade those in for any number for, for one card. You can buy one card per turn, either supplies, which will give you points and potentially plaster, or tools, which you can go ahead and save until they're useful to you. And then lastly, you can claim a dinosaur to your lab, going ahead and giving in the specific bones in order to claim the dinosaur. The way that works is you have to have at least one bone in order to claim a dinosaur, but once you have one, you can then effectively reserve the dinosaur and at any point score it, although you have to score it before you claim another dinosaur. So you want to kind of manage that little puzzle there. Because what happens is dinosaurs often have multiple, multiple fossils that they'll need, and each fossil over here is worth seven points, but the perfect score, meaning if you have both of these, is worth 17. So very often you're incentivized to try to hold off a little bit to get that perfect score, but that means you will not get the other dinosaurs along the way, and you're going to miss out on all those fun little symbols which are going to be very relevant for the majority scoring at the end over there. You're going to go through that cycle, gathering resources, gathering, spending energy to take your actions, buying a card, uh, claiming a dinosaur to your lab with the various fossils you've acquired, upgrading yourself with either game end points or ongoing abilities from the tableau over there, refilling the supply a few times until the game end is triggered, and then scoring for all your dinosaurs as well as a variety of other factors over here for various points in different categories, the most per category, for having all nine, you've got a whole bunch of end game scoring options as you go through the game as well as doing the game scoring, and then as well as points from potentially your game end tiles, your leftover teeth are worth five points over there, as well as any of these cards over there. And that's basically fossilisis. It's an action, it's a action economy game of trying to look through this puzzle over here, move things around, shove things off the edge, try to figure out the best way to position tiles to get what you need and to get access to the various fossils underneath the grid and get as many points as possible gathering the correct dinosaurs as efficiently as possible, better than the other players before the end of the game. As far as ease of play, this game is fairly easy to get into. It's a few things, well, let's go through this over here. We have a rule book over here, typical rule book from KTBG, which is excellently illustrated and laid out from, from uh, Josh 
Capel. And this is what this has everything you need a final scoring, final breakdown, all the events. Fairly easy to go through. This is a pretty decent, I'd say the most confusing part is stuff like moving around the actual uh, Deke site tiles. But overall, overall, very easy game to get into. Uh, runs around an hour or so, although it depends, especially if you're playing this with kids. This is, after all, a ca family friendly game. I think the box list is at 45. Box list is at 45 minutes. I generally find it comes close to an hour, but I'm also playing with my children a lot, which does slow down the experience, although that's it is a kids game over there. As far as player count, this is a two to five player game. I just have to check that there because I don't think I've ever played with five. I play this at three and four players. Uh, overall, both experiences work fairly well. The game moves fairly quickly, although again, caveat, you're playing with children or if you're playing with children. And so overall, the game moves pretty quickly. I liked it at three and four. Both are fine. Have not tried it at two and five. As far as my review of this game, as far as my review of Fossilisus, Overall, Fossilisus is a solid game. It's another solid game in the KTPG line, and I would say that the production, the production has some of the best production I've seen from the KTPG line of games, although I'm still very excited about Power Plants. Uh, for context, I've played Rec Raiders, I've played Creature Comforts, I've played Power Plants, which is, that one's not yet available, but I've seen, uh, I've played Fossilus, I may have played some others from their line, but overall, I would say that Offhand, I think this has the best production. Before we get into the actual game itself, this has the best production from those. These tiles over here are absolutely amazing to have. They feel incredibly pristine. The board and the setup and the way they have a full lid that goes over the board and you shake everything around, everything falls nicely into place. They have a nice overlay on the way you can stack these tiles and pull everything out. Overall, the production value over here is amazing. Art and everything else is standard KTBG, which is to say good standard, not bad standard. It's good standard. Everything is phenomenal. The graphic design, the art, all those things very solid. But production, I think this is possibly the best production, although I'm never really complaining about the production. Some of the stuff they have, I mean, honestly, if you go back to the cards and Rec Raiders, those are some of the thickest cards I've ever seen. Sounds like a weird thing to say, but if you have Rec Raiders, you know what I'm talking about. As far as the gameplay itself, this does very much fall into a typical KTBG game. It's very accessible in what it's doing, while not necessarily pushing the bounds of anything else, because it's meant to be a family-friendly game. It's meant to be a crossing point, so to speak, from pure, I don't know, Haba games and whatnot, but a next step up to something a little bit more, uh, not necessarily adult-friendly, but older kid-friendly, and I think it does a great job in that category. Overall, Fossilis has a few things going for it in terms of the compelling aspect, specifically towards children. Often and the toy factor is very much up there. Having this little situation over here, having the tiles where you have a bunch of tiles slowly excavating and you're pulling pieces, well, that happened too, and you're pulling the pieces out over here, although, by the way, this does actually happen mid-game, and you're gathering these tiles over here slowly but surely, does give it a very strong toy factor as far as both the natural attraction to dinosaurs kids have, I don't know if it's natural, the instilled attraction we give kids because dinosaurs are cool, and so they see a dinosaur-themed game, they see the process of extracting things, and they go ahead and want to be part of that, and they have these amazing tiles over here that are knocking off and gathering. So it has all that natural appeal as you collect fossils, as you trade them in for dinosaurs, it does well in all that sense. It does well as far as giving you a naturally appealing theme and game to kids and building the game well around that theme. So it checks off the box in that sense strongly. Past that though, some elements of the game I found to be not necessarily as fun as other kids' table board games. I found it to be potentially starting to shift into the mechanic, mechanically speaking, I found it shifted into something that my, my kids, speaking for myself and my kids, if they found less appealing than some other kids TBG games. You're going to have the set collection aspect, the same set collection aspect that you see in Creature Comforts, the idea that you're trying to gather all these these fossils and you're trying to trade them in, although I think this game gave you a bit more going on as far as, well, everything. As far as the various symbols on the dinosaurs, as far as trading them in for this, as far as the end game majorities. While it does the same, while it gives you the set collection that works well in a variety of their games, I think it potentially did a little too much in Fossilisus, making that the game not necessarily as intuitive to understand as far as comparisons to the other games. That's going to be include the whole aspect of the use of these tiles and trading them in but not getting changed. Those are small little tweaks that made Fossilisus a drop less mechanically appealing to my kids than, than some of their other titles. Uh, overall, Fossilisus is doing well on a variety of counts. Overall, Fossilisus was enjoyable. My kids have liked playing it. But from their games, from the variety of games that Kids Table Board Games puts out, I think Fossilisus has the greatest toy factor as far as my kids literally just wanting to play with this, forget playing the actual game, 
but is the least requested as far as mechanically speaking, as far as getting the game to the table and playing it. This one has been their least requested overall. For myself, it's hard to really judge these because I do play them as kids games. I play them as games that are fun to play, that give me a mechanics, that give me a bit of a puzzle, but I'm not also diving into it with a heavy competitive edge because I'm playing against my children. I would say for myself, and a lot of comparisons are being made to Creature Comforts and to uh, Rec Raiders, and that's because they all fall into a similar sphere for me. For myself, I've liked all of these games. They have all been compelling games that give me enough challenge that I'm invested in the experience, but also not so much challenge that my kids are tapped out of it. So ultimately, there's kind of two ways to grade this. For myself, as a parent playing this with their kids, I've liked all of these games, and I don't know if I have a clear favorite Possibly Rec Raiders. I don't know what it is about Rec Raiders. Rec Raiders does do something well for me versus the other ones are all solid. I like Creature Comforts and Fossil Assist likely roughly even as far as the mechanics they give me. I think my children, on the other hand, had a little bit more of a natural affinity towards worker placement and a little bit less of all the stuff happening in Creature Comforts contrasted with the action selection where you're choosing the amount of energy to spend and sliding tiles around. I think they found that to be a drop more for them. All of them are good, just I think Fossil Assist was one that was a drop less good than uh, Creature Comforts. As far as rating this one, again, kids games are always a little tr trickier to, to rate. What I will say is, for me, I'm happy to play all of these. I'd probably give this a 3.5, like most of their games. I enjoy them, they are fun, they are also not games that I'm heavily looking to play unless I'm playing with my kids, which always puts them at a weird rating scale. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and give you Creature Comforts and Rec Raiders. Both those games are going to be high, recommend high recommendations from us. Our family likes all of their games so far, or all of these ones that we're talking about over here, but I will say that in our personal order, we really enjoyed Rec Raiders. We found that one is the most compelling overall. Creature Comforts has been a lot of fun and probably my daughter's favorite from them. And then Fossilus has been a solid one, but one that gets picked a drop less than those others. And that's basically where it is. A little more vague on the review aspect. There's nothing wrong with this. It works really well. I'm just trying to review it from the balance of my own opinion of the game contrasted with my kids' affinity and desire to play those games, which always puts me in a slightly weird spot. Ultimately though, a solid recommendation, amazing production value from KDBG, and another solid game from them, and one that I am long overdue and actually covering. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, I hope you have a good one.